Lent begins in just a few days, but I'm afraid <clears throat> I'm afraid I'm going to give in to temptation today. And that temptation is Lent itself. To preach about Lent, even though we're doing a little bit of Mardi Gras celebrating today, or maybe a lot of it. So let's begin with our favorite Lenten topic, sin. All three readings today find the protagonist deeply aware of his sin. They find themselves treading the deep waters of their sin and shame. When the angels come to Isaiah, he thinks he's doomed because he knows he's a man of unclean lips. St. Paul says he's not fit to be an apostle because he persecuted the church. St. Peter says, depart from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. We're all trying to keep afloat in the deep waters of, of sinfulness. We're drowning in resentment. We flail around in selfishness and fear. We refuse to trust enough to grasp God's saving hand. This month's 50th Jubilee value of embracing diversity, along with our celebration of Black History Month, brings us face to face with the ways we, not only as individuals, but also as a church and society, fail to embrace people who aren't like us. Our whole society drifts in the deep waters of intolerance. Isaiah says, I am a man of unclean lips, living among a people of unclean lips. On Wednesday, we'll all put on ashes together, acknowledging not only our personal sinfulness, but also our corporate sinfulness. We're sinful, but God calls us anyway. The angels touch that burning ember to Isaiah's lips, but instead of his lips turning to ashes, they are purified. One of the angels tells him, your wickedness is removed. Your sin is purged. Paul is deeply aware that Christ died for our sins, for his sins. He trusts that God's grace in Christ has rescued him from his sinfulness, which of course includes murder. Jesus says to Peter, who is ashamed of his sinfulness, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. That most repeated refrain in scripture. What's deeper than our sin? Jesus' unfathomably deep mercy. But while God's mercy saves us from ourselves, it doesn't save us only for ourselves. Jesus calls Peter to action. From now on, you'll be catching people. Paul is called to be the great apostle to the Gentiles. Isaiah is called to be a great prophet of hope. They're called in spite of their sin, probably because of their sin. Their sinfulness and their awareness of their sinfulness, and because they're willing to swim in God's deep mercy and grace. Peter calls himself a sinful man because he hesitated when Jesus told him to go out into the deep waters and lower his nets again. His hesitation is certainly understandable. After all, he's the expert fisherman, not Jesus. Peter and his companions had been fishing all night and caught nothing. Now they're washing their nets. And this strange preacher tells him to do more fishing during the day when Peter knows he knows for certain there won't be any fish. Peter gives in to Jesus, though, pulling up the anchor of his expertise and certainty, putting out into the deep waters of the unknown and lowering his nets with the ridiculous promise of fish. They catch so many fish, the nets are tearing and the boat's sinking. 
In John's version of this story, they catch 153 fish, a number that has been the subject of plenty of speculation over the centuries, including the suggestions that that's how many species of fish there are, and that the number somehow represents all the nations of the world. Talk about embracing diversity. Peter and his companions probably want to tie Jesus to the boat and make him bring in such impossible catches every day until they get rich. But instead, they leave their lottery winnings and their shame and follow the stranger into even deeper waters. Paul, despite much opposition, allows the Spirit to blow him into the deep waters of preaching to the Gentiles. When Isaiah hears the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? Who will go for us? Isaiah puts out into the deep waters of the unknown by saying, Here I am. Send me. We're all swimming in the deep waters of our sinfulness. All of us, despite our diversity, have sinfulness in common. And Jesus invites us to trust in the depth and power of his mercy enough to allow him, rather than to merely pull us out of our sin, to transform the deep waters of our sin into the infinitely deeper and sometimes scarier waters of his mercy. There in those deep baptismal waters, we can discover anew the depths of our call and the depths of the gifts we have been given to meet that call. And that's something to celebrate on Mardi Gras, Ash Wednesday, and beyond.